Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. We will be back in less than a minute after Paula Dispro introduces our show with heavenly music in a short music video. Remember to stay tuned for later in the show when Paula sings a different song each week to the glory of God. Stand firm, stand firm. We are safe within God's loving hands. Keep on trusting all His sovereign plans. Stand firm in Him. Stand firm, stand firm. Keep on walking in God's holy ways. He will give His strength to face each day. The name of our show today is the second woe, the Muslim invasion. The Bible says one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Revelation 9.12 In my last article, The Silent Pandemic of Mental Illness, we discussed the first woe that had its conception in the first century, but was not fully realized until the sixth century with the opening of the first mental hospital in Iraq. Today we will discuss the second woe that also had its beginning in the first century with a number of heresies coming against the true teachings of our Lord. Like the first woe, this heresy against the church would not be fully realized or have its greatest effect upon fallen humanity until the sixth century. After the sounding of the sixth trumpet that corresponds with the second woe, a voice came from the throne of God in heaven directing the angel to loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. See Revelation 9.13-14. These four bound angels represent four strong powers that would arise and project an even more damaging heresy upon the Christian and Jewish communities. In the 6th century, Christians and Jews at the time lived peacefully in the area of the Euphrates River, also known as the Fertile Crescent, until they were conquered by Muslim invaders. These new converts to Islam in time were prepared for future incursions into the known world to kill and destroy. See Revelation 9.15 Let's back up a moment. Let's be very clear. In the beginning, before Muhammad received his prophecy in a cave, he was living in a Judeo-Christian world where the church at the time would have seen this new prophecy as just another heresy. In fact, Muhammad was so rejected at the time in Mecca that he moved to Medina to enlarge his following. His early conquest would not only send him back to Mecca and the Arabian Peninsula, but is already stated to the Euphrates River and the Fertile Crescent. This early heresy that eventually turned into the world's second largest religion has for many years solidified its position in the Middle East. 
and especially trying to establish or reestablish a caliphate in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, all along the Euphrates River. The other major country just east of the Euphrates River is the ancient Persian Empire, or modern-day Iran, clearly making it the fourth power or angel to be released. God can and has already used the Muslim invaders to bring his woe upon fallen humanity. This Muslim invasion is a perfect tool in the hands of a righteous God to rebuke the sins of fallen humanity as well as the sins of the church. The Islamic faith has no greater hate than it does against Israel and the West and especially the United States whom they see as being worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Before going any further, it's important to understand just how different the teachings of Islam are from the teachings of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Most believers in Christ understand His message of love, going the extra mile, and turning the other cheek. On the other hand, many today have grayed the lines between Christianity and Islam by ignoring what Muslims actually believe from their holy book, the Quran. It's important to mention again that the early church fathers saw Islam as a heresy and later on as coming from the devil himself. Speaking of infidels, the Quran says, Slay the unbeliever wherever you find them. 2 and 191. Make war on the infidels living in your neighborhood. 9, 1, and 23. When the opportunity arises, kill the infidels wherever you catch them. 9, 5. Kill the Jews and Christians if they do not convert to Islam or refuse to pay the JX tax. 9, 29. Do not hanker for peace with the infidels. Behead them when you catch them. 47, 4. Muslims must not take the infidels as friends. 3.28 Terrorize and behead those who believe in scriptures other than the Quran. 8.12 Muslims must muster all weapons to terrorize the infidels. 8.60 This is just a short sampling of the many verses in the Quran that teach their followers to kill, maim, crucify, and behead others in the name of their God. Clearly, this is not a message of love from a loving God, but one of hate and barbarism. Take your time now and read through carefully Revelation 9, 15 through 19. In very graphic, apocalyptic language, it describes in detail how terrorism has gripped the entire world through bombs, explosives, and perhaps one day by the releasing of an atomic bomb in the heart of the infidel's homeland by the Muslim invaders. The Bible says the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Revelation 9.15 What's clear about this verse is that the preparation was incremental, not only in the preparation but also in the implementation or the number of men being slain upon the earth. Step by step, the new Muslim invaders whom the early fathers called heretics would prepare people through a deeper indoctrination of their faith and then how to destroy other men who would not convert. This second woe has continued for over 1,500 years and will only grow much worse in the coming months and even beyond our worst nightmare. Nothing will stop this woe except total and complete repentance, which is difficult to see with fallen humanity, who have mostly turned their backs on God after publicly spitting in His eye. Don't think for a moment that a new deal with Iran, with another plain load of money, will change anything. Remember this was tried by Obama and Biden. Don't think for a moment that the Pope shaking hands and making a deal with Islam will change anything. As we examine this apocalyptic language a little bit closer, 
we see the number of mounted cavalry in the millions. If we took those numbers literally, the only country that could mount a million-man army at this point would be China, which is much further east of the Euphrates River. On the other hand, and more correctly to the text, not locked into time, is that we can add up the total number of cavalrymen, infantry, soldiers, and terrorists for the entire 1,500 years and come up easily with well over a million Muslim invaders going forth to kill and destroy. Furthermore, the apocalyptic vision stresses the importance of the weapons used to kill and destroy a third of mankind. Clearly the vision sees fire, sulfur coming out of either the musket, a rifle, the turret of a tank, or even some kind of advanced weaponry. The Bible says, By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Revelation 9.18 we can easily see how explosives and bombs have become the favorite arsenal of the Muslim terrorist. Revelation 9.19 could well represent some form of advanced weaponry unknown by the prophet in the first century. One could easily conjecture that the tales could be seen as the launching of multiple short-range missiles from a multiple rocket launcher, or MRL. In the following verses, fallen humanity is still not eager to repent, even after these two devastating woes. Please read Revelation 9, 20 to 21. Let me suggest at least two reasons why fallen humanity refuses to repent of their many sins. First, fallen humanity has explained away the plagues and woes, no longer attributing them to the hand of God meant to lead fallen humanity to repentance. It appears that most people are more interested in sharing some new conspiracy theory or some made-up false prophecy rather than sharing the Word of God. Or it's just easier to follow the crowd and blame everything on global warming or poor national or international leadership. Let us pray that when the Muslim invaders finally make it to our country, as they have done in many countries, including just recently in France, then we must stand up and share the truth of the gospel. The second reason people are unwilling to repent is that they love their new lifestyle and they greatly enjoy their sins, even when you tell them that their sins will lead to death and eternal damnation. Although we know that the Bible says that fallen humanity is blinded by the God of this world, see 2 Corinthians 4, 4, let us continue to pray that the plagues and woes sent by the hand of God will wake them up to their true spiritual condition. Finally, as already stated, this second woe will end up bringing us our worst nightmare especially if we allow Iran to complete its nuclear ambition. They have told us plainly that they hate America and that they will erase Israel from the map. This coming war will no doubt lead into the last great war against the Holy Land of Israel and any country that stands with her. It's important that we listen to the threats of those who seek to destroy us and not to appease them with some foolish peace treaty or the promise of more money. Let's pray that Biden doesn't go down this same ridiculous path. If we do, it will fail. The prophecy was given over 2,000 years ago and is applicable to our present day. If we ignore this prophecy, we do so at our own peril. Let me conclude by saying it once again. Our only option is true repentance and turning back to the one true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we as a people don't repent, we will stand alone to face the coming horrors. If the news is correct, then we will soon be under a liberal administration, opening the door fully to the second woe and a Muslim invasion. A war is coming. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Father. We have learned over the years, dear Lord, that believers don't talk much about being rebuked or chastened by you. They typically cast the blame on the devil or another poor soul. 
Occasionally, they may even cast blame on themselves, referring to it as simply an accident or fate. Rarely have we heard or seen believers fall down before you in repentance, seeking your forgiveness, acknowledging that it was your rebuke or chastisement that had brought them to their senses. Although we are certain that your plagues and woes are meant for fallen humanity, we do acknowledge that we will still reap the consequences of our sins. We also acknowledge that as a loving Father, you do rebuke or chasten us to keep us from falling deeper into our sins and their unavoidable consequences. Thank you, Father, for your great love for us, your beloved children. We pray that all of your beloved children will be enthusiastic and repent of their secret sins or their favorite sins, that they are unwilling to give up. Please, Lord, convict us of our unrighteousness. We pray this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the King James Version, the Bible says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Revelation 3.19 We have some amazing vocalists today to assist you in the application of the message you have just heard. But first, I would like to introduce all of my books, not for profit, but for continued support of our ministry. Please consider ordering one directly from my website that will benefit both you and the ministry. I would like to invite you to visit my online bookstore today for one of these incredible books. Final Warning offers evidence that the beast is already building the global city of Revelation. Stand Firm helps lay a foundation for the Christian soldier to overcome the wiles of the devil. Guiding Principles for Biblical Counseling is a very practical book for the layman and the professional. Revelation Truth is a collection of all my timeless articles written to help God's children stand firm. The Lord is my light and my great salvation. Whom shall I fear? No one, no one. The Lord is my light and the strength of my life. He is my song. I praise all day long. The Lord is my light and my great salvation. Whom shall I fear? No one no one, the Lord is my light and the strength of my life. He is my song, I praise all day long. He is my song, I praise the whole day long. He is the King, the Lord of everything. He is my shield, my very high reward. There's none as strong and great as the Lord. The Lord is my light and my great salvation. Whom shall I fear? No one, no one. The Lord is my light and the strength of my life. He is my song. I praise all day long. He is my song. I praise the whole day long. The King of Kings, the reason why I sing. The living word, my strength, my two-edged sword. There's none as strong and great as the Lord. The Lord is my light and my great salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
No one, no one. The Lord is my light and the strength of my life. He is my song. I praise all day long. He is my song. I praise all day long. Jesus, you're my sweetest song. I praise my whole life. We have a lot more show, but first, I want to personally invite you to listen to an important message from God for all of humanity. This is a message that I never tire of listening to. Then please continue listening after this important message for our next vocalist, who also sings to the glory of God. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, then I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ, who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven, and we are made into a brand new creation, where old things pass away. From the very first day, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord.
Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Thank you.